What's going on, guys? As you can see, I'm coming to you uh, live from my Sonoma mansion, which I've purchased with some DFS winnings. Awesome night last night. Didn't expect to play. Uh, went with a little bit lower of volume, but paid off. It was an ugly slate, but I'm happy. Can't complain too much at all. Gets me out of the crappy alley and into the luxury of this. As you can see, I am rocking um, some comfortable clothing. My MeUndies onesie came in yesterday. This isn't a, an ad. This is just simply me telling you that this is the most comfortable thing I've ever worn in my life and I'm never going to take it off. But figured I'm going to do my, uh, my recap video on a onesie. So here I am. Um, you guys probably don't want to watch me sit in front of a fake house any longer so let's take a look at everything that happened yesterday okay so uh, I tweeted out my lineup right at lock but just to go over since I didn't do a, a live stream last night I had uh, Ricky Rubio, Jared Bayless, Gary Harris, Alec Burks, uh, LeBron and Giannis, Jason Tatum, Amir Johnson, and Kevin Love they put up 351.2 fantasy points I only did $24 worth of entries and brought back 81 So it's always the days where you don't play as much um, that you end up regretting not having more volume, which I obviously do. Uh, obviously, putting up 351.2, you know, everything pretty much went perfectly for me. But let's go down the, the positions and uh, take a look at what happened yesterday. Um point guard was interesting you know just about everybody brought back value that you would have expected to bring back value um you know dame as the most expensive point guard is the only one that really missed uh, 31 fantasy points in 39 minutes it's just a uh, if you expect if you're seeing dame get 39 minutes you expect um you expect value there but then uh, Kyrie, Bledsoe, Chris Dunn, Rivers, Rubio, Jerry and Grant all had no problem hitting 5x or higher. And um, I liked Irving. I just wasn't able to get that to work uh, yesterday. I never really looked much at Bledsoe um, or Chris Dunn. He was fine. Um, someone mentioned Austin Rivers hitting value in the comments section yesterday. And, you know, it seemed great on paper. I just, with Blake out, you know, they're missing four out of their five original starters. I just wanted to see it first. It just didn't feel like, I, like, I just wasn't comfortable making any decisions on the Clippers yet to see how it goes, to see how the ball is distributed. But, um, and after watching early in the game, I watched, uh, I watched a couple minutes of the Hawks Cavs game and saw Schroeder take Calderon to the hoop like three straight possessions. I assumed Schroeder would have hit value, but 4.7x. Then Jamal Murray is the laid the egg. 9.3 fantasy points in 30 minutes, 1.8x. I liked him yesterday. Um, for a hot minute, I had him in my lineup. I'm very happy that I got off of him. And then down the line, um, you know, it was just the, none of the punts really did anything super solid. Bayless got 31 minutes, put up 15 fantasy points. He's basically right on the projection. Um, he was sort of the cost of doing business for wanting to roster Brown and Giannis at the same time. Uh, Rubio was 59% owned in my double up. Bayless around 20, so I'm okay with both of those picks. At shooting guard, uh, Lou Williams put up 33 in 36 minutes. He came in under value. Um, never really had a look at him. Donovan Mitchell uh, was able to hit value. And CJ came in just a little under, played 40 minutes. That's just that's really surprising. I know uh, I know Nurkic went ham. We'll get to that. Um, I went with Gary Harris and Alec Burks. Uh, Harris put up 41.1 in 40 minutes. That's 6.7x. Teammate Will Barton actually did 49.9, which was uh, 7.9x. I preferred, you know, clearly, I preferred uh, 
Harris to Burks or Harris to Barton rather. Um, but it looks like Barton was the better play ultimately. The only real stinker at the top of the heap was Marcus Smart. He only had 16 fantasy points in 32 minutes. Otherwise, you wanted to have Dwayne Wade putting up 41.9 in 22 minutes. He's been playing really, really well lately. Um, and then you can jump down to Redick and Bellinelli all, both having big games. But let's be clear here. The only thing that matters at shooting guard is whether or not you had the best punt of the night, Alec Burks. 53.9 fantasy points, 29 minutes, $3,600 in salary. Um, he put up 15x and just carried me to where I needed to be. Harris was 6.7% owned in um, in my double up, which is amazing. To get 6.7x on a guy that was 6.7% owned is perfect. And then Alec Burks. You know, 27.8% is is not super high, and having him, you know, almost assured my caching. Uh, from there, you know, we head to small forward, and I have so much trouble picking out small forwards every single night that it seemed like a no-brainer for me to see if I could fit in Braun and Giannis at the same time and just have very little to worry about. And surprisingly enough, just from the way that all the value broke out, um, it, building that lineup was really easy. I never like ended up getting you know ridiculous punts in there. Um, it just sort of built itself. So Giannis and Braun both put up just under 60, you know, just shy of 5x. I'll, I'll take that all day from them. Um, and then, you know, you <clears throat> you had to help, or you had to hope that you hit one of these other couple dudes. With Denzel Valentine, Covington, Jalen Brown, you know, Ingles, Prince, Nawaba ended up not playing, Hernan Gomez, like these, all these guys laid major, major, major eggs. Um, you got to hope that you were on Wesley Johnson, Tabo, or Evan Turner. Uh, no, I don't know. I can't imagine anybody was on Royce O'Neal. But small four was just an absolute wasteland. And unless you hit one of those three dudes, um, the play was, was Giannis and Braun. And then at power forward, I was surprised at the split of ownership. LeBron at 76% and Giannis at 25 I would have expected a little bit more narrow of a window um power forward was weird so i liked amir um once i realized how many like that he was going to get some minutes even before the starter news came out um i was liking him he did 27 points in 21 minutes 7.6 x just amazing and then there was a lot of value at power forward. You could have ended up on Ilyasova, who put up 11.3x. But you could have also just had any part of Collins, Saric, Henson, Tatum, Marcus Morris. You can drop down and go Fareed, Crowder, Jeff Green, Trey Lyles. Like, value was all over power forward last night. I never really paid too much attention to Simmons or Favors or Markinen. They came in just shy of 5x. Those are perfectly acceptable picks. The only real spots that you could have went wrong were grabbing people from the Blazers. If you had a Minu or Vonleh, which you shouldn't have had regardless, um, I would guess most people are happy with their power forward picks when they woke up. Um, there's not too much to say. It was just kind of everything sort of went as expected at power forward. And then at center, um, people that took Jokic are not very happy today rolled his ankle uh only got to play 15 minutes that's a bummer for Jokic owners um i went with love i didn't expect to go with a lineup with lebron and love in the same uh in the same scenario i was going to go with horford which <laughs> they uh Love scored 0.1 points more than him, so ultimately it wouldn't have mattered. I was ready to eat a bunch of salary last night just to make things work. Um, but Love, Nurkic, Horford, uh, Rolo, Mason Plumley, you know, all hit 
five to six x. Uh, Nurkic had a really big game for Nurkic standards. He's probably the play of the night for centers, and by probably I mean he was the play of the night for centers. Um, I would guess Rashawn Holmes probably pissed some people off. Nineteen minutes, sixteen point four fantasy points. He was sort of the the chalk center punt play of the night, but I thought if Amir is getting minutes, Amir is the the better play. But that's it. Um, I, you know, gambler's fallacy or whatever the hell it's called. You know, I, I do wish that I would have put in more value or put in more volume, but I didn't really, you know, I wasn't super focused on it. I'd been grinding hard over the past couple days, churning out videos and um, just wanted to cook a meal for the wife, take a break, not just stare at this over and over again. So I locked my lineup at uh, 6.15 or something and just kept my fingers crossed that no late news was going to make me have to grab the computer, but I just let it go, paid attention to Twitter, didn't see anything and, you know, hoped for the best and it, I got the best possible outcome that I could have gotten. So that's two winning days in a row. I'm happy. We're building momentum. And I'm coming back big tonight. Not big, but like, you know, I'm coming back standard. But I hope to have a big score. Um, so we'll do a, a breakdown video of the slate. And then I'll be back um, at 6 o'clock tonight for uh, Live Before Lock. So it's the breakdown of yesterday's slate. I don't imagine too many people are going to be interested. It was a, it was a low uh, low interest slate all around. Reddit boards were kind of a ghost town yesterday. Um, so please like this video if you liked it. Uh, it's a big help for me. Subscribe to the channel. I'm going to be churning these things out regularly uh, for the rest of this year. So, And by the rest of this year, I mean season, not calendar year. Um, follow me on Twitter. It's up there. Can't click on it. I don't know how to do that. But you can type in that handle. Um, check out Reddit uh, DFS Sports. I post all of this junk there every single morning. I'm there for questions if you want to ask. But really, you could hit me up just about anywhere. And uh, I will talk to you guys later.